Hello everyone, this is Alberto from the Bucker Lab. This is the Pansia YouTube channel and today I'm going to be showing you how to do GWAS. Uh, GWAS is going to be a two video feature. The first is going to be the simplest models and then we're going to build up to the mixed model. So if you really just want to run the mixed model, still I suggest look at this video, it's useful. Uh, but if you just really don't want to, then you can just go ahead and do it. I'm going to start by showing uh, uh, the location of the documentation for the command line interface just so that people know where to look for it. So here we have the directory with the standalone for TASL5. So once you go in there you can see a PDF and that PDF shows you sort of the commands that you can use, uh, some of the interesting options on how to execute it, uh, some of the things about increasing hip size so if you have the standalone you can always go back to this uh, documentation so okay back to GWAS uh, just a reminder of what we're trying to do uh, the underlying model uh, is trying to find correlations between our genotypes and our phenotype or set of phenotypes so it's trying to do it for multiple uh, uh, SNPs across the genome or markers depending on what you're working with and uh, in order to fit this model uh, we're going to use TASL so the simplest model we're going to use is a simple linear regression and in TASL it's called the fixed effects uh, linear model uh, so let's go ahead and do that so here we have uh, terminal uh, and here's the command that you're going to be running. I'm going to walk you through what this all means uh, and then we're going to sort of see the effect. So there were two of them. The first one was it's going to be this which starts with start tassel.pl. This means that after we run this command the user interface is going to be started. So we have the start tassel first then we allocate the amount of memory uh, we want to use. In this case we're going to use 6 gigabytes. And then we start a, a fork. Uh, in this case it says fork 1. This one in particular, that string, can be anything. can be fork uh, gino or fork g. Really it's just a string so that you can use that uh, information uh, later on. So in this case it's just one. Um, then it has a uh, dash h which means that we're going to read a hapmap file and tassel in the standalone contains tutorial data under tassel tutorial data data and in this case the hapmap is called mdp genotype.hmp.txt and the first thing we want to do is we want to filter our genotypes so we're going to use the option filter align now you're going to see the uh, sometimes uh, starts with non-capital and then the next one is a capital letter. That's a Java standard, so you are going to see this often, but it, it's sort of where it comes from uh, in any case. So we're going to filter alignment and then we want to filter based on very simple criteria. So the first thing we want to look at is missing data. So the option filter align mean count means it's, it's the number of, of uh, taxa or individuals in which you have to see a genotype call. In this case we're setting to 150 because that's roughly half of the individuals that are present there. So we're asking that at least half of them have a genotype. Uh, the value you're going to use here depends on many many things. Uh, ideally you want very very low missing data. Uh, there's imputation for that. Uh, in the case of maize uh, half the genome is not present between different lines. So missing data is sort of a biological reality. Uh, uh, this has to be imputed in some way mathematically, but right now we're just going to set that uh, filter. Then we're going to say filter alignment uh, for minor little frequency. And this, as I mentioned in my GWAS 101 video, is to avoid uh, outliers, things that are very low frequency, driving uh, false associations. So we're going to set it to 5%, which is this value. Uh, then we'll start a second fork, fork 2. And that means that we're starting a new thread in memory. 
so that we can do something else uh, in addition to the reading of the genotypes. So in this case, instead of the dash H, we're going to use import guess. That means that we are going to let Tassel sort of figure out what we're throwing at it. And we can use that in the first fork as well, uh, because we're giving a genotype, Tassel will know that it's a genotype. And in this case, we're going to give, again, from the Tassel tutorial data, data, uh, we're going to give the phenotypes, which is mdptraits.txt. So now that we have loaded both, both of them in memory, we're going to combine them. Uh, and that means that we need another piece of memory. So we start, uh, start a new thread. So then we call this thread 3. And then we're going to combine the phenotype and the genotype, which is the fork 1 and fork 2. So then we say combine 3, input 1, input 2. So if it had been fork G, this would be input G. Uh, uh, really, whatever string you use, just be consistent. That's sort of what it's telling the, the command. Then we say intersect, because we want whatever is present in both to uh, be that intersection in this combination of data. Uh, and then we're just going to run the... Uh, simplest model uh, linear model which is a fixed effect linear model plugin and we say end plugin so as i mentioned uh, we start this command with start tassel.pl so when i hit enter and run uh, it takes me to a new screen and then it launches the user interface it loads the genotypes the phenotypes it filters the genotypes and now we have the results for the association it all happens very fast this is the simplest model it's very very fast so I always suggest running it first. Uh, so now we have two files, the association files. We have the uh, the one that contains the allelic effect estimates. So it's the second one. And then the first one, which contains the F statistic and the p-value, which is just the measures of significance. Uh, and it contains uh, all, all sorts of other information. Uh, you can also do, uh, this is assuming the additive model, uh, the dominance model is also implemented if you want to look at it. So that we're, what we're going to do is we want to visualize this in some uh, useful manner. So we go to results and Manhattan plot and then we're going to select a trade. In this case we're going to use uh, the pollen. We say OK. And we have our Manhattan plot. So that's the feature of an association model. Uh, the x-axis represents the position across the chromosomes. In this case, different chromosomes are different colors and shapes. And the legend is in the bottom. And the y-axis represents the si statistical significance as the negative log 10 p-value. So negative log 10 just means that if it's a small p-value, like 0 0.01, it will have a negative log 10 of 2, then 0 0.001 would be 3, and so forth. So the number of zeros, essentially, uh, almost. So this is just the, the, the more, the higher you see this number. So in the case 12, the more significant it is. So 0 0.000000 something one. So uh, uh, this means that this is highly associated with a phenotype. And this is the simplest model. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, there is more sophisticated models, but it's good to see sort of uh, start simple and then build up upon the evidence we find. So one of the first things, going back to my original video, one of the things first things you want to look at is uh, population structure. So I, I mentioned in the Gigaboss 101 video that you can infer population structure from uh, principal component analysis of or multidimensional scaling and that's one of the considerations uh, so we can do that in tassel uh, if we want going back to this result we can go into the filter genotypes we have uh, 2000 sites uh, so we can filter some of them uh, by site names normally you just want to take a small sample or random sample so let's say we take a sample uh, we pick anything that has a string 30, 58, add, capture selected, that's what I wanted to do. A new genotype data set will be created, yes please. Okay, oh, 
now we have that. So we have 55 sites uh, for all this taxa. And now what we can do is we can do two things. Uh, we can either do uh, principal component analysis or multidimensional scaling. Uh, they're very closely related, and in the absence of missing data, they are essentially the same. Uh, if you have lots of missing data, I normally you would go for multidimensional scaling, which normally first does a, a distance matrix, and then does the, the composition based on that distance matrix. PCA will go directly at the genotypic data. In this case, there's very little missing data, so we can just go ahead and do a PCA. Uh, so we ask it to return eigenvalues and eigenvectors. We say OK. We have this. So the way we're going to run this uh, GLM with principal component analysis is going to be by selecting the phenotype. Then we're going to select the principal components. We're going to select them together. And then we're going to select our filter genotype table. Now after doing that, we say data uh, intersect join so that all of this is joined together. And you can see now that we have the taxa the covariates that are principal components, we have our phenotypes, and we have our genotypes. So we're going to do analysis, uh, GLM, uh, OK. And finally, we have a new table that includes the principal component analysis. And on the results and Manhattan plot, we can select again uh, days to pollen, OK. And we have significantly lower p-values. Uh, the Manhattan plot is different, but this is because it's accounting for some of those differences that are uh, population structure related. So those could potentially false positives in the original model. And uh, now we're controlling for that. 